lovely lovely warm France I'm so glad I can finally say that it has been raining non-stop if it hasn't been absolutely freezing it's been raining but today we have some sun and everybody is really really enjoying it all the animals are just relaxed they're laying there there's not a breath of wind it's just warm it's about 16 17 today and tomorrow it's going up to 18 19 which is amazing at this time of year so it's really really warm so you can really smell and feel that spring is in the air and the animals are definitely definitely showing signs that they're ready for spring i think now so uh, there was no video yesterday and the reason being is our young campho as you saw galloping around the field and getting all excited when nick and i were doing the fence he's had a haircut it sort of got pushed to that point where his coat is so thick a couple of days ago, or three or four days ago, it was minus six here. Really, really, really cold. And then yesterday it was getting warmer and today it's very, very mild. And tomorrow it's almost quite hot. So it just isn't fair on him. He can't regulate that coat. And for whatever reason, it's just, it, you know, this year has, has really been difficult for us with keeping the horse's temperatures regulated because of normally we just leave them be. You know, they can get their coat in winter. They don't need clipping. They don't need anything because obviously they're horses. But... This year, we've really had to monitor it and had to manage it. So we've clipped two horses already, which were Magic and Epilan, because they weren't coping. And Campho, bless him, got himself into a bit of a pickle yesterday. And he got himself so hot and bothered that I just thought, this isn't fair on him. So he has had all his hair cut off. He feels like a million dollars. He's had a lovely bath. He's got his nice clean rugs on. And I think he thinks he's going show jumping again because he's like, <laughs> talk about springing his step this morning, like dragged me to the field. So he's a very, very happy boy. Unfortunately, though, the clippers did go blunt on his tummy because he had that much coat so I'm gonna today I'm just gonna try and finish off the rest of it he had a nice bath yesterday so I've cleaned a lot of the hair so I'm hoping now the hair is a bit softer I should be able to just get it off but if I can't I've got to have the blades sharpened which means he's gonna have a bit of a hairy belly for a while so not that I think he's worried to be fair I think he's just relieved to be not so hot and like with such a thick coat so that is what I was doing yesterday and that is why there was no video yesterday because I was busy looking after him and um, Charlie has um, Wednesday afternoons off so he helped me he held campo so we could get the job done the other thing is what we did do in the morning and I did film it. It's not the best filming in the world because I was trying to do it whilst holding a baby. But Oscar Robin got his first set of shoes. Talk about melt me. Oh my goodness me. His tiny little feet wearing odd socks as well. That's a moon family trait. I just want to put it out there. We do wear odd socks because trying to pair all the socks. We've even tried having the same colour ones. And we said we just end up with like one left and we end up with all these multicoloured ones. So I've given up now. So now we literally all wear odd socks, a majority of the time, unless Nanny Beebe very kindly always buys us socks when she comes out. We try and keep them paired, Nanny Beebe. We really, really do, but it's very hard in this house. So Oscar is having his new shoes fitted with his odd socks. <laughs> and um, then I just assumed, and obviously I'm a mum of four children, so I thought 
bless him, he's going to really struggle now. You know, he's not going to be able to walk very well, you know, with the big clumps and shoes on his feet. No, put them on. He like ran off. <laughs> And now he's all, he's now he's gone. He's just out and about. And he's moving around. He's going so much quicker. There's his little head just keeps shooting about. <laughs> this is amazing. So I filmed it for you. So it's only small, but you do get to see him in his new shoes. And he got his first set of wellies. So he'll be outside soon. So hopefully at the weekend, we're going to take him for a nice walk. His first walk outside with his little welly boots on. So that was really, really lovely. And also, Vivian did your cardigan or sh steal the show in the last video. The little cardigan that Oscar Robin was wearing um, was um, made by a lovely lady from New Zealand called Vivian. When Oscar was first born, she contacted me and said, I have this cardigan that I make for all my grandchildren and I'd really like to make one for Oscar. Would you like one? And I was like, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. So she sent me the cardigan and he's worn it every day since he fitted in it. And he's now sort of starting to grow out of it. He's got a while left, I think, but it, you know, he is starting to get, he is starting to get a little tight. And um, Vivian said, would you like me to well, message me? I said, would you like me to send you another one? I was like, oh, that'd be amazing. They're really, really beautiful. So she sent me another two. So I've got two beautiful cardigans, the one that he's wearing yesterday and then another one for him to grow into. And they are really, really amazing. And rightfully so, everybody commented almost because it, you, they are they are truly beautiful. And we are really, really touched that you thought of us in that way, Vivian. And obviously, you know, now that people have seen it, I need to tell everyone who gave it to him. So yeah, really, really special. And as he grows out of them, I'm going to just put them on teddy bears in his, the ones that we make, I make, and he's going to have them on the teddy bears and they'll become family heirlooms. So they're going to stay in the family forever. Really, really special cardigans and just beautiful. So thank you very much for that, Vivian. And thank you for everyone to comment because it really is special and it deserves to be recognised. And what else was I going to say? Yes, there was another comment which I needed to say. So a lovely lady commented saying... Why do we feed the horses in the field and not in the stables? Because it makes so much extra work. That is very, very true. And also, it is a very, very good comment. Um, the reason I do this, there is a little bit of method behind my, was it madness behind, method behind my madness? I think that's how, I think that's the same. Um, it is because the horses are old, you, you know that. So Epilan is, um, I think if you work him out in, he's 31, uh, 32 this year, he's about 94 in in human ears in human e human ears human years so he's about 94 um and obviously little lives 33 so she's got to be knocking on 100 and then we've got sort of you know 20 from upwards so you're looking at horses between sort of you know i guess from about 70 to 100 so they're they're you know they're, they're bless them especially epilan he's knocking on a bit and um what i do is the reason i feed them in the field is because it keeps them active sounds a bit crazy i know but when i put them out without a breakfast in the stable they then look for it. So they walk up and down and they get a bit excited. And when they hear the wheelbarrow coming and they hear me coming, they like canter. You see, you see in the videos, they canter up the hill and they have a little buck and they keep moving. Because if I kept giving them in the stable, they just sort of stand there and they don't move. So when I put them in the field, they've got no reason to do anything. They just go out and they have a roll. They like fall where they are. They roll and then they eat and then they come in. They don't actually move about. So the breakfast time is very, a very, very exciting time. So is dinner time. So when you give them feeds, they get excited. And because they get excited, they feel the energy and a boost and they want to go. So it gets them excited. So they canter around the field and they do a little bit. And that way it alleviates and helps me with keeping their, obviously keeping their joints moving. It helps get their legs down and all of the, the different, you know, health issues that come with standing still. Horses get the same. So I do it on purpose to make them move about and to get them excited and to get them doing things. So that is why I feed the horses in the field. Yes, it is hard work and yes, it isn't ideal because it means I've got to wash all the buckets off in the evening and then go and traipse around and catch them all and get all the buckets. And yeah, it is hard work. But if I don't do it, I end up with all sorts of, you know, stiff and fat legs and all sorts of horrible things happen when they stand in the stables. And because they have to go out every day, because again, they can't just stand in the stables, um, it works quite well because it does just give them that little bit of an oomph and they want to canter up the hill because they know their breakfast is coming. So that is why the horses aren't fed in their stables and they're fed in their fields. Only the breakfast at night they're fed in their stables, but in the fields during the day. So that is why. Anyway, I'm going to get on because there's lots and lots to do and uh, I shall see you in the video. Bye bye. <laughs>
Hey everyone, thank you for all your nice photos and stuff. And thank you everyone, I really like them. And they're from all around the world, aren't they? Yeah. All over. And we're going to get a big map, like you guys said. We're going to put it on the wall and then the boys, or we're all going to as a family, pinpoint just how much magic is being spread around the world. So thank you all again. Just one thing, the Amazon wish list has been very, very tricky. We are techno dinosaurs, um, so you'll have to bear with us. What we think we're going to have to do is do one for Amazon.com, one for Amazon.co.uk and so on, and we'll put all the links in the description so then it's a direct buy to deliver from the relevant country. So I think that's going to work. We're going to try it, so just bear with us. So we'll update the list. When we get a moment, we'll put all those things on and we just, like we said, just can't believe how generous and how kind everyone's been buying up all those things that we put on there. There's lights for the horses, there's head collars, there's rugs, there's all those things. So we'll try and split the list up so that everyone gets the opportunity to buy. But again, thank you all very much. Uh, it's been a magical day here. The sun has been shining, the sky has been blue. There's a pretty big moon out tonight and there's some stars in the sky, so it's beautiful. Yeah, and one thing, Mummy, on the thing, on the phone, she showed me my turkeys outside and I'm really happy. That's true. Rupert's turkeys were out and about. They've been, as you'll see, they've been uh, having a little explore of the farm. So they're out of their little pen where they've been in and they're having a look about. So yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so onwards and upwards, I've got lots of things to be doing back here at home. Just over these last few days, so from Wednesday, today and tomorrow, I've been helping that friend of mine who I do some mechanicing with. We're changing an engine uh, in a car and a few other bits and pieces. So I've been away. It's only 10 minutes down the road, so it's ideal. I've been doing the school runs and stuff, but I've just not been about... Mummy, mean, Mummy Moon's been at home, so um, yeah, it's all been good. So uh, onwards and upwards at the weekend, I think we've got stuff to do, finish the fencing for the goats, and then we're back up on the roof, and we're going to do that um, bit of extension and gutter that we spoke about. So lots to look forward to.